Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex. I'm a full-time forex trader based in Romania and in today's video we're going to backtest my strategy together. The strategy is very simple to follow. We're going to use the one hour chart to determine our weekly and directional biases. If you do not know how to do that, please make sure to watch the video that is going to appear linked in the upper right corner of your screen in just a few seconds. It is the only method that I personally use to determine whether I will be a buyer or a seller. Then we're going to drop down to M15, M5 or M1 charts in order to find our entry pattern. The entry pattern is very simple. We're going to focus on Fibonacci. Then we're going to wait for price to go into OTE levels or anywhere below equilibrium for buys. And there we're going to wait for a displacement to the upside, a retest and a rejection with the expectation that we will always get at least 20 pips of profit. Stop loss is always going to be 10 pips below the fib. My strategy is a very high win rate strategy. So because I want to be a scalper, I just want to get in the market and out as fast as possible, grab at least 20 pips with every setup that the market is giving me, and then I'm done for the day. So without further ado, let's start trading. We always start from the one hour chart, determining our directional bias. We can see that weekly is bearish and also daily is breaking market structures to the downside. And we can also see that we have a new break in market structure to the upside over here. Because we started the back testing from a Monday, I was print more candles until we're gonna reach at the beginning of Tuesday. One reason why I don't like to trade on Mondays is because usually Mondays is just going to pick a side and I just wanna know what side that is going to be. Let's start printing more candles until we're gonna reach with the price action at the vertical line, which delineates the true beginning of the day. At this point, we can see that Tuesday opened with a bullish candle and we have a new break in market structure. So we're gonna mark that accordingly. And we also have a new market structure that is being respected. Our bias changes to the buy side and also weekly still remains bearish. So we can look for both sides of the market. Right now, let's go to the 15 minutes chart and we're gonna wait for our entry pattern to form. So in order for us to have an entry pattern, we need to find a price leg that we're gonna put our FIB on and anywhere below equilibrium, we're gonna look for our entry pattern and then we're gonna take buys. Before we find that price leg on which to put our FIB, we have to wait for the formation of a swing high. We can see that we have our swing high already formed. So at this point, we can draw a fib from the low that takes liquidity all the way up to the swing high that broke market structure. And then we're gonna wait for price to come below equilibrium and form our entry setup. Price right now is making higher highs, so it is okay for us to adjust our fib. And because we are placing fib on a price leg that broke the most recent market structure created, it is okay for us to drop down to the five minute and look for entries. So at this point, I'll just clone that fib so that it appears on the smaller time frames also and right now we can look for our entry if price action is going to drive higher then we're gonna adjust our fib accordingly so right now there is no entry we don't take impulse entries at the break of swing highs we don't take impulse entries when we have pin bars that is not part of our strategy right now we don't have any entry although the market drives price higher it is okay we don't look for any setup yet. Right now we can see that we have a new liquidity grab and a new break in market structure. So it is okay for us to adjust our FIB accordingly. So let's do that and also update the FIB so that it will update on smaller time frames also. Creating new highs is going to always make us adjust our FIB. And at this point we can see that the market might be having a retracement lower into equilibrium. Okay, right now we have a touch below the equilibrium level and into the optimal trade entry levels. Let's see whether we're gonna get an entry or not. We can see a displacement to the upside and we're gonna wait for a retest and then a rejection candle, which apparently never came. And right now our setup is already invalidated. So we're just gonna have to wait for more candles to print and show us another setup. So right now we don't have anything. Price is still around the OTE levels and there you go. Our FIB is already invalidated. So we're gonna have to adjust FIB to make sure that it's not being validated. So at this point on the five minute, I can see that we closed the five minute candle and we had a very big rejection to the upside. So I think it would be okay for us to drop down to the one minute chart and look for entries. The strategy is perfectly adaptable, whether you wanna scalp the one minute or the five minutes, whether you wanna be a day trader, position trader or swing trader, it doesn't really matter. So right now we have a displacement move to the upside in our intended direction. So we have to wait for a retest. 
which is this candle, and then for a reject, which obviously is this candle. We want to trade at the break of the rejection candle's high, but before doing that, we want to make sure that we're going to have a little wick to the downside created for our entry candle. So we're just going to play the market. Right now, we're not going to print full candles. Right now, by looking at this candle, we can see that we are basically rejecting. And at this point, we don't have any entry, so we have to look for a new entry pattern to form. We can see a new displacement move being created. So again, wait for retest and then rejection. And there you go, we have our rejection candle. When we're talking about scalping, it is very important to make sure that the broker that we're gonna use has a very small commission and also a small spread. The reason why I choose to trade with Hunko Trade is because they successfully fulfill these two conditions in order for my trading journey as a scalper to be as smooth as possible. They're a true ECN broker and their spread starts from as low as zero pips. They also have a very, very small commission from $2 for every one standard lot. They have a leverage of up to 500. If you will deposit at least $100, they will also provide you a matching bonus of 100%. And that matching bonus can reach up to $25,000. And if this isn't enough on Trustpilot, they have a staggering 4.9 out of five stars coming from more than 300 reviews. If you want to join Hongo Trade, I'll leave you a link in the description down below. Make sure to give them a check. Now let's go back to our backtesting. So we were looking at the rejection candle that has just formed in here. And right now we're going to play the market. Now I'm buying the market. The reason for that is because we broke above that candle's high before doing that. We made a little wick to the downside and then as we broke above that candle's high we showed a willingness to stay above it so right now we are already in the trade we're gonna go ahead and set our stop loss as i've already said stop loss for me is always 10 pips below fib and a little lower is gonna be around 771 pips and now we're gonna go back to the one minute and start printing candles Whenever we're gonna reach at least 200 floating profit, then we're gonna start to look profits. We're not gonna close our entire position. We're gonna look to take at least 70% profit. So right now, let's see what's going on. We can see that the market went a little against us, but the strategy is a high wind rate strategy. I don't care, it goes against my position as long as it doesn't invalidate my FIB layout. So at this point, we're just going to have to wait and see what the market is going to do. So there you go. We can see that we're already around 20 pips of profit. And right now, I think we're already more than that. So we're 30 pips in profit at this point. I'll just go and close a partial from my position. So I'll just take 70%. My stop loss is going to remain where it is right now. And let's see if the market is going to give me more pips. Right now, I can see that from my entry point till where price is at right now, we have 35 pips. If we can go five more pips higher and make sure that we're going to get, and there we go. So at this point, we're getting at least 40 pips. So 45, 45 pips. So right now, I can safely go to my trade, remaining trade, and I'm going to close 0 0.20. And right now, for the remainder of 0 0.10, just 10% from my initial one standard lot position. Uh, I'm going to leave it as a runner and we're going to put stop loss at break even. So at this point, we're running risk free and let's see what the market is going to do further. We're getting closer and closer to uh, ending the New York kill zone. And at this point, I would strongly recommend that whatever positions you have opened, if there is a relevant amount of money that you're winning on that runner, take it. If you can leave some more runner, go ahead and do that. I think that if I'm going to close another 50%, I'll be okay with it. So right now I have a runner of 0 0.05. And for the first trade, I already made 3.5 five percent profit let's remove all the fibs and we're gonna start printing one hour candles until we're gonna reach the opening price of the next day which is going to be a wednesday as usual we're gonna start the new day by marking the new created market structure so we have a new break in market structure to the downside over there and also we have a newly created market structure to the upside which currently hasn't been broken 
So at this point, we're only looking to be sellers. So at this point, we can go to the lower time frames and look for a bearish entry. We can go as low as five minute or even the one minute. As I said, the strategy is perfectly adaptable to whatever type of trader you want to be. I'll start with the one minute chart. We can see that we have a liquidity grab and then we had a break in market structure. So we're going to place our FIB from that high that took liquidity all the way down to the lowest low that was created after we broke market structure and we're going to start printing one minute candles we can see that the price is already above equilibrium so let's see whether we're going to get our entry or not let's zoom in a little and look for more information to print so we can see that we had a displacement move to the downside however we're not trading outside kill zones and we can see that the london kill zone hasn't started yet and even more our fib has already been invalidated so right now it is safe for us to say that in order for us to get a new setup we have to adjust fib and make sure that it's not being invalidated so after i've adjusted my fib let's wait for more candles to print obviously we're above equilibrium but we're outside kill zones so currently no trade Okay, and at this point, we can see that we have a displacement move to the downside. However, we're still not inside the kill zones, but getting closer and closer to the London kill zone open. And we can see that we already had a new displacement move to the downside. So we're just going to box those two candles. Then we have a retest candle, and right now we have a rejection candle. If we can break below the low of the rejection candle, forming a little wick below, above, before doing that and then showing a willingness to stay below we're gonna sell the market and we're gonna aim for at least a 20 pip first take profit level as usual stop loss is gonna be 10 pips above the fib and with this occasion stop loss is actually quite small which is very good so let's see how the market is going to react in the meantime I'll prepare in here my one standard lot and I'll sell on an impulse so we can see that currently we have no reason to sell because we didn't create a little wick to the upside so we're gonna have to wait for a new candle to print and there you go the market goes lower without creating that wick right now we have the wick to the upside being created and if we could trade below the same level then we're gonna be able to sell the market we can see that we kind of like have new retest candles. So at this point, I think it's safe for us to readjust our, our impulse price leg and wait for a new candle to form. There you go. Right now we have a new rejection candle. So again, if we can break below it slow, so we have the little wick being created. Okay. So at this point, I would definitely sell the market, zoom out, and then we're going to go to trades and set our stop loss. The 100 FIB level means around 10 pips of stop loss, so plus 10, that's going to be around 20 pips, which is very good for a gold scalp. And right now we're going to allow the market to develop, patiently wait for it to go at least 20 pips in our favor so that we can start taking partials. So I'll just print candle after candle, candle after candle. Price right now goes back to our entry point, but we don't care because as I said, the strategy is a high win rate strategy so most of the times we will get that 20 pip that we're looking for right now we haven't had a 20 pip take profit level almost 20 pips but we're just gonna have to respect the strategy guys there you go and you move against our position but again we don't care Market continued to drop, and right now we're sitting at a 30 pips profit. So let's see one more. Okay, new candle, deep slower. And right now we're sitting at a 35 pips profit. So I think it's okay for us to take another partial. We're just gonna close another 0 0.20. We're gonna leave a 0 0.10 position open, which is 10% from our initial standard lot, and we're gonna move price at break even. Right now, if we're going to get stopped out, we don't care because we've already took the profit for today and we're running risk-free. 
and we can see that the market goes higher and higher and eventually takes us out now at this point we're going to go to the five minute chart but before that let's remove our drawings from the one minute and right now we're going to go to the five minute chart and see whether we could get a new entry from a five minute perspective we can see that we took liquidity from above that high and we broke a new market structure so we're just going to drag fib from that high all the way down to that low now if we can get a displacement move to the downside then we can take the trade however we can see that the five minute candle closed as a bullish candle and it's basically invalidating our fib layout so right now let's just wait for more candles to print our new fib layout would be from that high all the way down to that low and we can see that we're getting displacement move to the downside however what i don't like is the fact that we're basically not closing below that candle's low we're not going to consider it as a potential entry setup Okay, right now we're getting closer and closer to ending the London kill zone. We can see that the market went a little higher and apparently it's going to go, yeah, it already invalidated our FIB. So if we're going to zoom out a little, we can see the market going higher and also the London kill zone has already ended. So it is better for us to wait and get closer to the beginning of the New York kill zone so that we can look for new setups. Whenever the market goes against my bias on smaller time frames, what I like to do is look on the 15 minutes chart and see how the candles are printing over there. At this point, if we were to look for a new entry setup, our FIB layout would be for from that high down to that low because we had a liquidity grab and then a break of market structure. And we can see that price currently is at OTE levels. We've already started our New York kill zone. Let's see how candles are gonna print. Okay, we have a displacement move to the downside and the next candle, wow, already invalidated our setup, right? Our FIB layout. So the best thing that we could do is just take the 100 fib level a little higher right now the fib layout is not invalidated anymore so at this point i like the way that we are rejecting from the upside over there but i need more information okay right now i can see that we have a new displacement move to the downside so having a retest and a rejection candle would help in taking a new bearish trade if we're going to have the setup we're going to trade if not then i guess we're going to be done for the day you can see a new retest candle forming but we actually have no rejection and actually we can see that the market is attempting to go higher and yeah eventually it invalidates our fib layout so at this point there is nothing that we can do with this market going on the one hour chart we can see that we've already broken one new market structure so we're just going to adjust that accordingly on m15 m5 or m1 there is no bearish price leg that i can put my fib on so i believe we're going to have to wait for the new day to open so let's go back to the one hour and print more candles until we're going to reach the opening price of the next trading day which is going to be a Thursday. We already have the one hour candle from the opening price of Thursday and we have to adjust our market structures as always. So we have a new market structure that was created and respected and also over there. So let's zoom in. Currently our bias, let's not forget, is bearish. So again, we have to look for bearish setups. Whether we're gonna get them or not, that's something that we're gonna see. So now looking on the five minute, we can see that we have a potential fib layout from that high all the way down to the low that broke market structure. Let's zoom in and start printing candles. We are above equilibrium. We could be looking at a one minute setup. Let's go to the one minute and see how that chart is looking. Looking on the one minute, we can see that we've already had an impulse price leg over there. Let's see whether that was a reaction from a FIB level. So we had a liquidity grab over there and that was the lowest low that was created before we had the impulse price move to the downside now if we're going to go below the slow we're going to be able to adjust our fib from that high down to whatever low it's going to be created and potentially get another micro scalp like i like to call it but we'll just see So at this point, it makes no sense for us to take any trades. Okay, we did go a little lower, didn't we? Yes, we did. So let's adjust the FIB. 
and obviously we're gonna have to wait for a new push to the upside above equilibrium for this tiny fib and potential entry setup market goes lower and right now it pushes higher okay so now we have a displacement move down retest and right now i believe we have an invalidation candle and also this candle invalidates everything so our new fib is going to be like this a new displacement move to the downside however in this case we didn't even touch the equilibrium level so i wouldn't be pretty confident in taking a new setup we might be looking at a new setup like this with liquidity grab and a new break in market structure but let's see so right now we're gonna have to wait for a new retracement up into the equilibrium of this other tiny fib and apparently it just oh okay so let's see okay displacement move to the downside perfect and it just goes lower not touching our pain level retest rejection okay if we were to sell at the break of the rejection candle slow it means that we're going to sell in a deep discount which is not optimal for us to do obviously if we want to sell we want to make sure that we're selling in premium and if we want to buy we want to make sure that we're going to buy into discount levels so at this point i don't think it's going to be a very good idea selling the market unless we could go a little higher oh okay so we did go a little higher <laughs> Okay, so when we have a new rejection candle, but the market just keeps on going higher. And right now we have a new impulse move to the downside. Okay, so currently if we're gonna be able to break below the low of this candle, making sure that before doing that, we're gonna create a little wig to the upside, I'm gonna be pretty confident in selling this market. So let's see. Okay, so the market goes lower, but we, okay. So right now we did create a little wick to the upside or we might create a wick to the upside so if we're gonna break below that low again even during this candle's trading i'm gonna be happy with taking the trade let's just lower the ticks per second because we're on the one minute chart and everything is moving quite fast so right now our setup is not invalidated okay and we did close with a new retest candle so let's wait for a new candle to form it was a doji okay and right now we have a new rejection candle so again breaking below that candle slow would be a good opportunity for us to sell okay and right now i'm selling because we did have that little wick to the upside created and right now it seems that we're breaking below the previous candles low and we showed a willingness to stay below even the market goes higher we can clearly see that actually wants to go lower so looking here at our floating profit if we're gonna be able to take 20 pips then we're happy fellows so let's start printing more candles and before doing that let's not forget that our stop loss so let's print more candles and we're going to make sure that once we're going to reach around 20 pips, we're going to take partials. Okay, price seems to be going lower. And lower. Right now we're at 12 pips. Okay, and going lower, 16 pips. Okay, and I think, okay, right now we're at 20 pips at least. So we're going to close a partial as usual let's take 70 percent off if we can go a little lower then i think we can move stop loss to break even so we had a total of 23 pips so far stop loss is still where it was initially and right now we might be looking at a potential new setup which would be looking like this so let's adjust our rectangle accordingly and see whether we're going to be able to get a new entry okay so the market went a little lower retest plus rejection so again breaking below that candle is low let's see if we can sell another position okay so right now we're in another sell we did make a little wick to the upside and then we broke below that candle's low showing a willingness to go lower so let's adjust our stop loss level now because we're in a new position i believe it would be smart for us to put break even for the initial trade and let's see what the market is going to do now i'd really like to see where our 20 pip mark is going to be from the new entry maybe around here something like that 
maybe just a little lower. Okay, perfect. So let's see how the market is going to behave. Okay, right now from our second entry, we're already at 11 pips in just a matter of minutes. Back to entry point, but we can see that we might actually have a new push to the downside, which doesn't really seem to materialize. And right now we're back at OT levels. And eventually our fib layout was invalidated so at this point what i do i just close all my trades and we have uh so far a 6.25 profit and we took one loss which was here 10 pips because our fib was invalidated okay so we are creating an impulse move to the downside let's see whether we're gonna get some sort of entry because i really like the way that the market is creating this potential setup so right now we had a retest candles and rejection candle and let's see whether we could trade so let's play the market okay we have the little wick being created let's see if we can break and stay below that low okay so right now we're selling okay and right now let's see how the market is going to further develop wow that's a great move <laughs> but we can see that it's not at our 20 pips mark yet let's increase the ticks a little okay so right now it's in a drawdown but we can always get at least a 20 pips first profit level if we follow the rules of the strategy okay so right now let's print more candles so let's wait and see okay so this is a good lesson for everyone who doesn't take partial profits after 20 20 something pips or doesn't move fast enough to do that and then the market goes back to the entry point now if it that happens you should be pretty confident to still allow your trade to go more pips and eventually reach again the 20 pips mark in case you're gonna see a new impulse price move in the direction of your intended trade oh okay so in real life conditions this market would have moved not that quick so that i could have allowed it to go like 60 pips right so at this point most probably i would have taken profit 70%. I want to bring stop loss above these two equal highs in case the market is going to want to have like a equal reaction to the upside equal to the one that it already had to the downside then most probably it's going to come and attack the liquidity above those equal highs and if it does that I don't want to be um I don't want to stay against the market so we're just going to move stop loss around there currently 60 pips so we're going to take another partial 0.2 and right now it's safe for us to put stop loss at break even we currently have 60 dollars in floating profit if this represents a relevant amount of money for you you can close even more out of that position and you know what i think that's exactly what i'm going to do so i'm going to close another 50 percent and right now we have a runner of 0.05 so if it's going to take me out of break even i just don't care wow 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 Okay, so currently we have 100 pips. Now, at this point, um, yeah, I think I want to take another partial. So let's take another 50% and we're left with 0 0.03. And why not bring stop loss a little lower? So think about it like this. Every time the market is making a very big move to either direction, that is a displacement. And while the market is doing this, it's just creating this sparse trading to the upside and it's mainly trading to the downside. This is what ICT would call as a sell side imbalance, buy side inefficiency. And the market is gonna to want to come back and fill that area. As I said, I don't wanna stay against an algorithm that is going to want to reprice higher just to make sure that it's going to make this market trade efficient, fill the gaps that it created while probably smart money was selling like crazy over there. Now, if we were to trade a new setup at this point, fib layout from that high all the way down to 
to that low and we can see that our runner got stopped out and right now we're just about to invalidate this fit layout yeah so right now it's already invalidated let's go to the 15 minutes we can see that we're pretty close to ending the new york kill zone so just doesn't make any point for us to look for more setups and right now we have some adjustments we can see that we broke a new market structure to the downside and at this point i think it would be safe for us to stop trading for the day until the new trading day opens which is once price action is going to reach this vertical line which is going to be the opening price of friday and because it was friday the 4th of february 2022 that would have been the first day of friday from the month of february and it would have been a non-farm payroll friday so i usually do not trade during non-farm payroll so this ends my trading week so basically if we go to our close trades over here we can see that we had a pretty nice week so it basically took at least one setup every day if we're gonna check our graph over here we can see a steady growth see you guys next time in the next video thank you so much for watching and i wish you all the best bye